Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order 22 of the year 2021, appointing the members of the Council of Commissioners of the National Institution for Human Rights and IHR. NIHR's Council of Commissioners shall be formed as follows. First, full-time members. Khalid Abdelaziz Al Shaar, Dr. Fawziya Saeed Al Saleh, Dr. Malallah Jafar Al Hamadi, Ali Ahmed Al Dirazi. Second, part-time members, Dr. Badr Muhammad Adil, Dina Abdurrahman Al Ladi, Rawda Salman Muhsin Al Aradi, Dr. Huriya Abbas Al Dari, Daniel Mark Heron Cohen. Third members of the legislature, Hala Ramzi Faiz, Ahmed Sabah Al Saloum. Their term of office shall be four years renewable. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the victory of Cordoba against Qad Disb 2 to 1 and hailed the Bahraini technical and administrative support to the team and their contributions to achieve further success. His Highness added that this victory is a drive to achieve more successes in the upcoming period and affirmed his keenness to provide all the support the team needs to achieve the desired goals. He added that these achievements are a result of the efforts of the technical and administrative teams as well as the team players. His Highness stated that the coming period will require exerting further efforts to achieve the desired goals. He wished the team further success. The goals were scored by Miguel de la Cuevas and Luis Redondo and the team scored 10 points along with the Real Lenancy and Real Morisa with the same points. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the STYS, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, delegated the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to attend the conclusion of Nasser bin Hamad Premier League for the sports season 2022-2021. His Highness Sheikh Khalid witnessed the last match in which Rafah team played against Al Majiya team at Bahrain National Stadium in the presence of the Chairman of Bahrain Martial Arts Council, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. The Assistant Secretary General of the STYS, Abdul Rahman Sadiq Askar. The President of Bahrain Football Association, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The Deputy President of Bahrain Federation for Technical Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Salman Al Khalifa. The President of Rafah Sports Club, Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa. The Deputy President of Rafah Club, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa. And the President of Malkia Sports Club, Jasim at the end of the match, His Highness Sheikh Khalid crowned Rafah Club team as the winner of Nasser bin Hamad Football League. He congratulated the president and members of the Rafah Sports Club Board of Trustees on the victory after winning the title of His Majesty the King's Cup. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the technical level the team demonstrated during the two competitions. He also commended the efforts of Rafah Sports Club's administration led by Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid for its support to the team and providing the suitable atmosphere that ensured their success. He also praised the efforts of Bahrain Football Association led by Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa in organizing the football season, wishing its success in developing and advancing Bahraini football. A ceremony was held remotely marking the conclusion of the 25th Bahrain Quran Grand Prize under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments held the ceremony online in the presence of Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, SCIA President Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, scholars, officials and participants. SCIA President delivered a speech thanking His Majesty the King for patronizing the annual ceremony. He praised the efforts of the government chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa lauding the role of the ministry and other supporting parties. A group of 44 long-serving employees who spent over 30 years, the jury members and award partners were honored. SCIA President Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa then launched the 26th edition of the Bahrain Quran Grand Prize. 
Labor and Social Development Ministry and the National Health Regulatory Authority, Nahra, signed an MOU to license quality training institutions in the health field. The MOU aims to open the way for investors to license institutions specialized training to develop health employees' uh, skills in the field. It also constitutes an opportunity for job seekers to obtain advanced training that will facilitate them to obtain attractive jobs in the health sector. Labor Minister Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan and Nahra CEO Dr. Maryam Adabi Al Jalahma signed the MOU. The memorandum stipulated that the Labor Ministry shall receive and review investors' requests to establish private training institutions in the health field after being guided by the technical and professional opinion of Nahra in licensing health training institutions to ensure the type and validity of the qualifications offered and the validity of the training place. The alternative sentencing law and procedures which were issued four years ago are considered a modernized step in the reform and rehabilitation process in the Kingdom of Bahrain, which added to its efficiency and value thanks to the royal directives to expand in applying this law to achieve its noble and social goals. More in this report. The law of alternative sentencing represents one of the landmark achievements of the Kingdom of Bahrain in promoting human rights. Thanks to royal directives, the expansion in implementing this law covered more than 3,200 inmates, which reaffirms that the human rights scene in Bahrain is busy with constructive legislations, accomplishments, and initiatives. Alternative sentencing that has been implemented by the Minister of Interior and Interior Ministry staff, which took place in Bahrain and was not adopted in any other neighboring country, can pave the way for inmates who left prison. I hope that His Majesty the King continues to pardon prisoners, especially during these holy days. We pray to Allah that better days are coming under the reign of our wise leadership. In addition, the inmates who are eligible for the alternative sentencing requirements expressed appreciation for this step thanks to its role in reintroducing them into the society. I thank His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and the Minister of Interior for giving this opportunity for the people who committed mistakes and were reintroduced into society. Alternative sentencing is only adopted in advanced countries and Bahrain is implementing it on a big number of people as one of the beneficiaries. This allowed me to stay with my family and to be able to keep my job and carry on with my career. In addition, I'm learning new skills and experiences which introduced me back to society. The alternative sentencing is considered of our work requirements. There is flexibility and understanding. The people here very cooperative. I was an inmate at the Reform and Rehabilitation Center, and I was pardoned with an alternative sentence in community service at the Ministry of Health. Thanks to Allah, I have done the sentence at the Ministry of Health. I have learned a lot from the sentence, such as going back to my family. I also learned a lot from community service, especially when working at the Ministry of Health. I thank His Majesty the King and the wise leadership for the alternative sentencing procedures which benefits everyone involved. I want to talk about alternative sentencing, which is a sentence that does not take away freedom. The advantage of this sentence is that the person goes back to his home and family to take care of his wife and children. He goes back to his job to be able to maintain his income. He has many economic, social and psychological advantages. In addition, the society makes use of his expertise, knowledge, culture and efforts during this time. I would like to thank those in charge of this program, which is very organized. Since day one of being chosen to be part of this program, everything is clearly outlined. They are considerate of the person's background and career path. This is all in addition to respect and care. I thank everyone and I think we are a pioneer internationally for having such a program in our kingdom. Once again, the Kingdom of Bahrain proves that it is an oasis for human rights protection as a reality and practice and that preserving human rights is a national pillar in the Kingdom of Bahrain. 
The Kingdom of Bahrain has contributed to the WHO's evaluation and approval of the Chinese Sinopharm vaccine through the Kingdom's membership of the WHO Strategic Advisory Group on Immunization. The Kingdom is represented on the group by the Chief Executive Officer of Primary Health Care Centers, Dr. Jazila Sayyid, and a member of the National Medical Task Force for combating the coronavirus following the evaluation process. The WHO's Committee of Vaccination Experts recommended the approval of Sinopharm for emergency to use making it the first Chinese vaccination to be green-lighted by the WHO, recognizing its safety and effectiveness. Bahrain contributed to the evaluation process through data and information related to its participation in phase three clinical trials. In a statement, the WHO confirmed the recommendations for approval of the strategic advisory group of experts and accordingly it recommended the vaccine on the basis of a recipient receiving two doses. During the process, Dr. Zira Sayed reflected the experience and results of the vaccine vaccination trials produced by Sinopharm and Bahrain, which showed the vaccine's effectiveness for those over the age of 18 to be at 90 percent and for those over the age of 60 at 91 percent. Bahrain, one of the first countries to provide free vaccination to all citizens and residents, has vaccinated 70 percent of those eligible with at least one dose. This is the first time that a Chinese vaccination has been included in the emergency use list of the United Nations WHO. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 highlighted the importance of following all precautionary guidelines, including being vaccinated against COVID-19 to increase shared immunity and community protection and reduce the severity of symptoms for those infected. The task force noted that 78 percent of the 1,706 active COVID-19 cases recorded on Friday, the 7th of May, have not received a vaccine, while the percentage of those unvaccinated in intensive care was 94 percent of 119 cases. The task force further added that all four of yesterday's deaths were of persons not vaccinated. The task force reiterated the dangers of not following all precautionary measures, adding that vaccines contribute to reducing the number of COVID-19 infections and the symptoms of those infected. The task force concluded by urging everyone to register for a vaccine free of charge by visiting the Ministry of Health's website or via the Be Aware Bahrain application. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 787,455 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 570,362 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 12,867 with 1,321 recoveries and 1,502 registered new cases and three deaths. 560 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 909 are contacts of active cases and 33 are travel related. The deceased were a male citizen aged 85, a female citizen aged 65 and a male expatriate aged 59. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.